it's no secret why we don't see this actress anymore. Some celebrities leave the spotlight to pursue other economic interests after achieving global renown and a million-dollar empire. Whether they retired temporarily or permanently, these celebrities now work regular day jobs in the private sector. The lifestyle change may be less glamorous, but holding a conventional job eliminates Hollywood's high stress, time-consuming demands. The following previous celebrities now have day jobs that are almost like ours. Eric Estrada, formerly Chips, present reserve duty police, net worth $4 million. Eric Estrada was born in East Harlem. Carmen, his mother, sewed. Estrada knew he wanted to be an actor since childhood, but his 1970 film The Cross and the Switchblade was his break. NBC, owned by Comcast's main show, was beloved. The former activist and actor is an Idaho Police Reserve deputy. Estrada is best known for portraying Officer Frank Poncherello, aka Ponch, in Chips. Tiffany, I think we're alone now, 80s pop star. Current clothing store owner. Net worth $4 million. Tiffany was an 80s teen singing icon, best remembered for her song I Think We're Alone Now. She also sang I Saw Him Standing There, a Beatles version with modified lyrics. Tiffany's song topped the Billboard charts and was included in an Apple campaign. Tiffany still sings, but she runs a clothing boutique. She promotes her apparel business in coffee shops and festivals using her 80s celebrity. Freddie Prince Jr. Previously, she's all that. Currently, chef. Net worth, $19 million. The film I Know What You Did Last Summer introduced Freddie Prince Jr. to Sarah Michelle Gellar, his future wife. Prince Jr. is still in show business, but today he produces WWE. WWE employed him from 2008 to 2009. He blogged about the matches and wrote for WWE Media. After that, Freddie and his wife founded Foodsters, a culinary firm. Charlie Corsmo, previous What About Bob, present law professor, net worth $500,000. The Disney comedy What About Bob famously starred young actor Charlie Corsmo. After that, he planned to work in academia, but he still occasionally appeared in movies, most recently as William Lichter in 1998's Can't Hardly Wait. After leaving Disney, Corsmo went to law school. His undergraduate degree in physics was from MIT in 2000. He got his JD from Yale Law six years later. He was an EPA and political worker. Case Western Reserve Law Professor teaches corporations and corporate finance. Gina Davis from Thelma and Louise, currently documentarian, net worth $50 million. Former actress and model Gina Davis, the 1982 film Tootsie launched her career. Her breakout role was in The Fly, a thriller. Her Beetlejuice portrayal made her famous worldwide. In the 1990s, her acting career stagnated. Fans may remember her Disney-produced short-lived talk show, The Gina Davis Program. Davis quit Disney to direct and run a business. She launched the Gina Davis Institute on Gender in Media. Her institute promotes women in media on screen and off. Davis funded the 2018 documentary, This Changes Everything, using her business connections. Angus Jones, once from Two and a Half Men, presently media company management, net worth $15 million. Angus T. Jones was best known for Two and a Half Men. At five, he made his film debut in Simpatico in 1999. The 26-year-old appeared in The Rookie, George of the Jungle 2, Bringing Down the House, Sea Spot Run, and The Christmas Blessing. Jones retired and went into the private sector, but Two and a Half Men and his other projects remain on Amazon and Hulu. He works for the multimedia corporation Tonight, which finances and creates many communication services. Macaulay Culkin, formerly Home Alone, present Bunny Ears website publisher, net worth $15 million. Macaulay Culkin became popular as a kid star in Home Alone. He appeared in 1991's coming-of-age movie, My Girl. 
He was one of the most successful child actors ever, appearing in The Good Son in 1993 and getting even with Dad a year later. Culkin now runs the satirical Bunny Ears site, providing material and cross-promotions, including some noteworthy red-letter media collaborations. His humorous Twitter tweets are also popular. Josh Saviano, previously Wonder Years, currently Lawyer, Net worth $500,000. Another actor turned lawyer is Josh Saviano. The 1988 to 1993 sitcom The Wonder Years starred the New York native as Paul. After the show ended, he played a lawyer in a few Law and Order Special Victims Units episodes. After leaving NBC, Saviano studied political science at Yale. He was Sigma News frat president. After graduating, he was a paralegal before getting his JD at Cardozo Law School. He joined a law firm in the year 2000 and started his own 15 years later. Taryn Noah Smith, previously Home Improvement, current vegan food company owner, community submersibles tech manager, net worth $300,000. Taryn Noah Smith played Mark in Home Improvement. In the 1990s, Tim Allen made over a million dollars per episode on Home Improvement, a hit sitcom. Smith retired from acting afterward. He said in an interview he didn't want to act. Smith founded Play Food, a non-dairy cheesemaker. Play Food hasn't taken off, and Whole Foods and Trader Joe's don't carry it. Vegan Smith started a vegan restaurant with the same name. Community Submersibles, a submarine piloting and educational project, employs him as a tech manager. Jeff Owens from The Cosby Show as Brooklyn Shakespeare Company Director, net worth $300,000. Jeffrey Owens appeared on Cosby in the 1990s. It's Always Sunny in Philadelphia, That's So Raven, Lucifer, and others featured him. In 2018, the Daily Mail published images of him as a Trader Joe's cashier. Owens supporters argued that the show industry was fickle and that he shouldn't be humiliated for working at Whole Foods. That notoriety helped Owens land a 10-episode Tyler Perry part. He developed and directed the Brooklyn Shakespeare Company, in addition to appearing in minor roles. Gene Hackman, once from Unforgiven, current novelist, net worth $80 million. After a long career, Gene Hackman retired from acting but has not discontinued writing novels. In his six-decade career, the 90-year-old has won two Oscars, a SAG Award, two BAFTAs, and four Golden Globes. After a 2004 sabbatical, he returned in 2016. He retired in 2017. Hackman now writes novels. His publications include three historical fiction, a Western, and a police thriller. Most recently, he published his thriller Pursuit in 2013. Amazon gives it a four out of five star rating. His 1999 novel, Wake of the Perdido Star, was his debut. George Foreman, formerly two-time World Heavyweight Champion, current HBO ringside boxing analyst, net worth $340 million. One of the most successful 60s and 70s boxers was George Foreman. Boxer Jimmy Young defeated him in 1977, retiring him. After a religious epiphany, Foreman became a minister. He returned to boxing in 1994. At 45, he defeated half his age Michael Moore to reclaim his title. Before retiring, he was the oldest heavyweight boxing champion. Foreman also owns the grill patent, now an HBO ringside analyst. Mara Wilson, formerly Matilda, current writer and podcaster, net worth $500,000. Mara Wilson was born in Burbank, California in 1987. At six, she played Natalie in Mrs. Doubtfire, making her famous. She was in Miracle on 34th Street, Matilda, and Thomas and the Magic Railroad. She last acted in the year 2000. Her retirement was announced that year. Wilson now writes, podcasts, and is popular on Twitter. The New York International Fringe Festival featured her piece, Sheeple, although she now writes novels. Her novels, Where Am I Now, her 2016 book, addressed her childhood celebrity. Linda Hunt, previously Oscar winner and Hetty Lang, present private life enthusiast, net worth private. 
Linda Hunt, a skilled actress with a 30-year career, has become rare in the entertainment field, leaving admirers confused. Her disappearance from the spotlight may raise suspicions, but Hunt has always been fiercely private, prioritizing her personal life over Hollywood. Hunt's legacy in film and television endures despite her recent low visibility. Her Academy Award-winning performance in The Year of Living Dangerously and her famous role as operations manager Henrietta Hetty Lang on NCIS Los Angeles have captivated viewers worldwide. Her talent and adaptability are evident in her contributions to the entertainment business, which remind us of her acting skill and dedication to her profession, even though we don't see her as often. Sarah Michelle Geller from Buffy now author and business owner of cookbooks. Net worth $20 million. Sarah Michelle Gellar debuted at four in the 1980s film Invasion of Privacy. Kendall in All My Children and Buffy the Vampire Slayer were her big roles a few years later. Gellar acts and operates a cooking-focused lifestyle company. Her firm was founded in 2015 and her debut cookbook was a bestseller. Foodsters is her brand at Whole Foods and Giant Eagle. Phoebe Cates, Fast Times at Ridgemont High, current clothing store owner, net worth $35 million. Gremlins and Fast Times at Ridgemont High starred Phoebe Cates in the 1980s. She later said in an interview that she didn't love acting or the profession. Cates now owns a clothes store since she said she was acting for the money. Blue Tree, her Madison Avenue store and small business is hers. Her company's privately owned, unlike Levi Strauss. Jeff Cohen from The Goonies, currently lawyer, net worth $4 million. Born in LA, Jeff Cohen was an actor in the 1980s and 1990s before retiring in 1991. He was most recognized for playing Chunk in Steven Spielberg's The Goonies as a child. Cohen retired to study. He earned his JD from UCLA Law in 2000. He found gigs as an entertainment attorney in LA using his show business connections. He started Cohen and Gardner in 2002. Variety and Hollywood Reporter named him a Hollywood top executive in 2008. Amazon sells Cohen's book, The Dealmaker's Ten Commandments. Peter Ostrom from Willy Wonka and the Chocolate Factory. Present large animal vet. Net worth $500,000. Peter Ostrom played one major role. He played Charlie in 1971's Willy Wonka and the Chocolate Factory. He was 12 when talent agencies cast him in the film. After the film, he refused to accept a three-picture contract and avoided discussing the part. Ostrom focused on his other passion, animals. As a child, he loved horses and went to veterinary school. Ostrom is a Cornell-educated large animal vet in Lowville, New York. He's only appeared on film once in the YouTube documentary, Role Model Gene Wilder. Julia Stiles, previously Save the Last Dance, current philanthropist, net worth $8 million. Julia Stiles became famous as a teen actress in Save the Last Dance and 10 Things I Hate About You in the late 1990s and early 2000s. She intentionally took a vacation from movies after a few years. Stiles prioritized philanthropy she began working with Habitat for Humanity and Amnesty International instead of appearing in films. After years of working, she returned to acting in Riviera in 2017. Bridget Fonda, formerly single white woman, currently actress, net worth $37 million. Bridget Fonda is from an acting dynasty, therefore she naturally entered the industry. Fonda has many successes, including Single White Female and It Could Happen to You. Fonda stopped acting in 2002 despite her achievements. Fonda married Tim Burton collaborator and composer Danny Elfman at the same time, which contributed to her choice to retire. Bridget's current activities are unknown. However, admirers were surprised when she appeared in early 2020 looking different after 12 years. Jerry Ryan from Star Trek Voyager occasionally acting, cooking, net worth $20 million. Though today a cult classic, Star Trek Voyager had low ratings in its early seasons. To increase viewership, producers introduced a fresh, appealing character, which worked. 
After seeing Jerry Ryan's Seven of Nine, nerds worldwide were fascinated. Ryan was a popular favorite and reprised the role in other franchises. Ryan still acts, but less so. Ryan, a francophile and keen cook, owns Ortolan in Los Angeles and worked as a chef at The House. Jonathan Taylor Thomas Previous Home Improvement Current Director Net Worth $18 Million Jonathan Taylor Thomas became famous for playing Randy on Home Improvement. The 1994 Disney picture The Lion King featured his voiceover work. Two years later, he voiced Pinocchio in New Line Cinema's The Adventures of Pinocchio. He retired in 2006, but returned from 2013 to 2016. He went to school after performing. He graduated from California Prep School in 2000. Studying abroad in Scotland, he attended Harvard. He earned a Columbia General Studies degree. Though he appears on Fox's Last Man Standing, he directs. Jack Gleason from Game of Thrones current college student and theater owner. Net worth $6 million. Like Peter Ostrom, Jack Gleason had one major part, playing Joffrey in Game of Thrones. The 2011 to 2014 HBO smash made the star famous worldwide. He quit acting in 2014 to study. He studied at Trinity College, Dublin, after HBO. He owns Collapsing Horse, a Dublin theater company. While at Trinity, he started the firm. He and his co-owners were DU players. Gleason has been on screen since retiring, so stay tuned. Andrew Shu, once from Melrose Place, current website owner, net worth $100 million. Delaware-born Andrew Shu, Dartmouth College awarded him a BA in history. His stint on Melrose Place, a soap opera, made him rich. He played Billy Campbell from 1992 to 1999. After leaving the Fox hit, Shu served on the board of his nonprofit, Do Something, which encourages youth to get involved in their communities. Shu runs Cafe Mom, a mom focused social network. Karen Parsons, formerly FPB, current writer, net worth $1.5 million. Comedian and actress Karen Parsons. She became famous for playing Hilary Banks, the family's oldest daughter on The Fresh Prince of Bel-Air from 1990 to 1996. She appeared opposite Damon Wayans in Major Pain in 1995. Writing as Parsons' job, while she appeared in films, including SNL Studios' The Ladies' Man, she focused on writing. She wrote Sweet Blackberry, an animated series on unsung black heroes, inspiration for her middle school novel How High the Moon, came from her mother's Southern heritage. MC Hammer, once of You Can't Touch This fame, present preacher, net worth $1.5 million. MC Hammer was rich, yet enjoyed spending it. Despite declaring bankruptcy in the 1990s, he's returned and is still considered a pop rap pioneer. He preached after retiring from music, he hosted MC Hammer and Friends on Trinity Broadcast Network in the late 1990s. Hammer Time, his 2009 reality show, was brief. Preaching is his major concentration, but he occasionally releases music. Rick Moranis, once from Honey, I Shrank the Kids, currently Homebody Dad, net worth $10 million. Rick Moranis won Comedy Gold in the 1980s with Second City Television and starred in Ghostbusters, Little Shop of Horrors, Honey, I Shrunk the Kids, Parenthood, and more. Moranis is retired now. He retreated to raise his kids as a single dad. Moranis has hinted at returning to Hollywood, but two Ghostbusters reboots have failed to satisfy him, at least until 2020, when the unexpected happened. Rick Moranis will work on Honey, I Shrunk the Kids' sequel, He'll play Wayne Zielinski again. Lisa and Louise Burns, once from The Shining. Currently, lawyer and scientist. Wealth, $3 million. Lisa and Louise Burns became famous as Stephen King's scary Shining twins. The Stephen King novel, The Shining, inspired the film. Typical of King, The Shining was psychologically terrifying. 
Jack Nicholson played Jack Torrance, a penniless writer who works at a haunted hotel in the snowbound Colorado Rockies. After the Warner Brothers film, the Burns sisters, who tweeted as the Shining Twins, faded. Then they said Hollywood shunned them. Not acting now, Lisa's a lawyer and Louise is a research scientist, but they occasionally attend horror conferences. Jenny Garth, once from Beverly Hills 90210, present business owner, net worth $8 million. Jenny Garth played Kelly in Beverly Hills 90210 from 1999 to 2000. She appeared on What I Like About You from 2002 to 2006 and on her own CMT reality show, Jenny Garth, A Little Bit Country. Garth modeled in print, advertisements, and infomercials before starting her firm in 2017. She founded MomGiftBox.com, a mom-focused subscription package. Box proceeds benefit charity, her Dune jewelry collection. Keith Thibodeau Previously, I Love Lucy, dance company executive director, net worth $1 million. I Love Lucy would be different without little Ricky. Keith Thibodeau, five years old, played a tiny part in Lucille Ball's successful program. After the show, the actor became a successful musician with David and the Giants. After struggling in the 1970s, Thibodeau found Christianity, which helped him recover. He is now Ballet Magnificent's executive director. His wife, Kathy Denton, started the firm in 1986. Angela Cartwright from The Danny Thomas Show, currently photographer, net worth $5 million. Angela Cartwright became famous as a Von Trapp child in 1965's The Sound of Music. Cartwright played Linda Williams on The Danny Thomas Show and Penny in Lost in Space when she wasn't singing with Julie Andrews. Cartwright started a thriving Studio City photography business after marrying Steve Guion in 1976. She suits commercials and art for large and small clients. Jerry Mathers Previously, Leave it to Beaver Current Commercial Loan Officer Net worth $7 million Sioux City native Jerry Mathers began his work at two years old, although he wasn't enthused about it. When auditioning for Beaver Cleaver, he informed producers he didn't want to be there. He was hired immediately. After joining the Air Force as a teenager, Mathers became a commercial loan officer in 1978. He retired from acting but returned to many guest roles. The 70-year-old star promoted Leave it to Beaver on MeTV. Lauren Chapin No longer from Father Knows Best, currently a retired dog groomer. Net worth $6 million. 1954's Father Knows Best, Lauren Chapin, played a lady whose family was revealed, but her life was different. In her biography, the actress recounted a difficult childhood. After the show ended, Chapin was unemployed. By 1981, she made ends meet as an air hostess and dog groomer. Father Knows Best is currently performed live at gatherings and on cruises by the former actress. If it fails, she can use her evangelist license. Quinn Cummings, previously family, current writer and businessman, net worth $4 million. The Goodbye Girl made Quinn Cummings an Oscar-nominated actress before she played Annie in Family. Cummings retired from acting in 1991 despite his talent. After founding Hip Hugger, a baby sling firm, she sold it in 2006. The mother of one writes for a living. She published Pet Sounds, The Year of Living Dangerously, and Notes from the Underwire, a memoir. She published her final book in 2013. Danny Bonaducci a former Partridge family member, present radio host, net worth $5 million. The 1970s TV classic The Partridge Family starred teen heartthrob David Cassidy. Fans adored the singer, but Danny Bonaducci's persona, Danny, earned the most laughs. Danny has tried practically every entertainment industry niche. His VH1 reality show, record, professional wrestling career, and radio personality are among his most notable achievements. Bonaducci is also a minister. Charity boxing contests have pitted him against Donny Osmond and Robert Shapiro.